Hi, how's it going everyone? So today I will share with you pets that you must buy that is extremely useful that will always help you win the game. They have very strong effects that can turn the tides of the battle and then they also have strong stats as well in certain cases. So let's start with the first one shall we? We start with the lowest tier which is tier 1. Fish. Fish. 2-3 stats. How? I mean that's the that's the strongest in, 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 the, in the tier 1 right now right because like the only one that can defeat it if i'm not wrong is is the pig and at the same time it can grant you a plus one plus one to your entire board when it levels up but the most important part is the two three stats because two three stats are like premium right it can destroy almost all the pets in tier one and usually this will help you carry you in the first three to four rounds and that is pretty useful like it has quite a high win rate i think somebody did a did like a statistic test of all the tier 1 pets like what is the best starting build in tier 1 and almost every time you always have fish and if you have fish in your build most likely you're gonna get a 70% and higher and if you have a fish if I'm not wrong a fish otter and mosquito you get like a 95% win rate not quite sure how things will have changed by then because that was pre pick nerf I think I'm not sure whether it's a nerf or not because pig was like 2-2 back then then now pig is 3-1 so we at least have one pet that can destroy the fish so maybe the stats will have lowered by then but overall fish still sits at the top of tier 1 and you should always pick it if there's a chance um then the next one is let me think ox ox is probably the the, the next closest tier right ox to be honest i feel is slightly overpowered Ox being able to gain melon armor at such an early stage in the game where everybody's attack damage is like it's below 20 because melon armor can only block like 20 damage at most right but in the mid game to like the early to mid game right nobody hits beyond 20 most of the time and melon armor is almost like a invincible shield you can use this to just knock down everybody and most importantly, that makes what makes it so overpowered is not just the melon armor. It gets plus two attack damage as well whenever a creature in front dies, right? So it just keep it just keeps on like getting extra attack, and and this is just unfair. Extra damage and melon armor. This is very useful in terms of your using it as a carry in your team, or you can use it as your last line of defense because of the fact that it has melon armor. You can put this as a at the last row. And with its metal armor, it can just destroy whatever unit your opponent has right in the last row. Or you can just use it in front, like in the in the second second unit. Make sure you don't put this in front because it requires a creature to, to die in front of him for you to get metal armor. But overall, at like at, at its tier, which is tier four if I'm not wrong, it's way too powerful having metal armor. Like there's no other type types of armor right except garlic armor, which blocks like two damage not too bad be powerful but having this like invincible armor is just unstoppable you are guaranteed to kill the, the whatever unit that's in front of you as long as like like your health is lower than your attack right and and that is absolutely insane so you can you, you if you play long enough you will always see that ox is probably a a good choice if you want to get 10 wins and you don't want to do shitty meme builds and all these things so that's for ox the next one is badger i let me tell you you will notice that there's a lot of badger builds in my gameplay and to be honest badgers are very very underrated i think badgers is very powerful so let me just put this here first in super low pets right you only have five slots to put five pets and that means you have limited amount of creatures so if your pet, if one pet can take out two pet, that's a huge advantage, isn't it? That's where badger comes in. If you have a very giant badger that that at least have 20 damage or 30 damage, right? And, it, and it's level two. It's guaranteed to kill whatever that, is, that comes next, right? So this has a lot of potential to be able to destroy two creatures. So your strongest badger hit your opponent's strongest unit. Maybe they trade. Then your badger erupts and kills the second strongest unit your opponent has 
and of course you knowing the fact that your badger is going to erupt and destroy your own creature you can always put the weakest one because the weakest one right oftentimes you can kind of disregard it as like an empty slot a slot that is like not necessary like it's wasted it's a wasted opportunity but the fact that you can just sacrifice your weakest creature why to soak out the damage and leaving your strongest second strongest unit alive and then your opponent doesn't know that you are playing a badger right they're not going to play around with it so essentially your strongest trait with your strongest your badger dies erupts and kills their second strongest because usually people posi position it such that strongest to the weakest so this allows you to gain a lot of significant advantage because essentially you are just using one badger to kill two of your strongest unit and you are just sacrificing your weakest unit which is which is like non-essential right <laughs> non-essential essential so that is why it is so, so strong and you should definitely try it out i will put the badger builds i created in the description below and in the comments peace it's very powerful so that's for badger why i really like badger a lot it's a it's a very powerful carry and it's also a very strong last line of defense if you are playing honey badgers in the early game so you can probably do something like a like a last line of defense versus honey badger in the early to mid game then you transition into a badger in the late game once you get a, a giraffe a monkey or like some sort of buffers that can buff your 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 badger so that's for badger ox fish next is skunks skunks i say this a lot of times and in the in the in the sniper tier list skunks is if i want to choose one of my favorite pets and the strongest pet ever i feel is skunks i mean it's very contentious why is why is the strongest right it can be stats wise it can be i mean swarm builds are and carry builds are very different right in, in terms of like having a 50 50 creature versus a a spawn build so it's very contentious but in personally for me right skunks are always a a, a good pick um you cannot go wrong with picking skunks at any time of the day any moment in the game you will never go wrong with picking skunks because it's able to reduce your opponent's health by 33 percent 66 percent and 99 percent at level one level two and level three and this what this means is that it scales so no matter how big your opponent's creatures are they will always be reduced by that percentage alone but you see it you see other snipers like a crocodile um a mosquito they use a set amount of damage which is eight damage one damage six damage so on and so forth it doesn't scale at all unless you upgrade it but it doesn't scale with the opponent's health but this scales so your 99 percent is going to apply the same way throughout time and they will always reduce it to one percent and that's enough for you to kill them very easily that's how strong it is and and with that effect itself right it's a very powerful equalizer so what this means is that when you are like behind when you're losing your strongest unit is not as strong as your opponent's strongest unit having a skunk equalizes the playing field so your weakest is like this level their strongest is at this level then with skunks right you kind of bring them down to this level so that they can do an equal trade or you can out trade them and if you are ahead it is also very useful because you are at this level in terms of stats they are at this level and then you can dampen them down even more so that you can just kill them very easily so i mean it is a very useful it's a very useful unit that i will always pick if i want to just go go for a stable build that can at least guarantee like eight wins and above or even 10 wins so that's scums for you and then you have scorpions so scorpions is pretty interesting i feel that scorpions is like i mean as we all know we have seen so many scorpion one up mean build it really is that powerful like just even without the one up one scorpion alone imagine you pour so much effort into growing that your strongest pet growing your bison or your worm or your dog and then you have one freaking scorpion your opponent plays one scorpion and it just kills you I mean, this is so powerful, right? You're paying 3 gold against their, what? 20 plus gold unit that has 50-50 stats and eventually you just trade it out. So this is very powerful in situations, right? Where you are behind, when you are kind of like losing and you are halfway through pivoting to a new build. 
running a scorpion is very useful because you can use this to equalize the thing for you. you can just if your opponent doesn't like play around scorpions i mean their strongest unit is gonna die i mean you can just trade with the strongest unit and i mean you have your then now this puts you in a position where you are kind of in the equal position because your second strongest unit or your strongest unit most likely can matches their second strongest right i mean that's the case most of the time so so that's how it is scorpions are very useful and with one up it's even more useful or if it if you can get it to 21 that's also very useful because it hits past melon armor and it's able to deal lethal damage every single time right so that's why scorpion is so useful i mean if it, it's a very good it's a very good tool if you want to pivot if you are kind of like if you have an extra spot you want to fill things up you can put scorpions as well then you can also play around with different spots i mean people know that you're gonna put scorpions directly in front right you can always put it like behind the second uh, the strongest unit or you can put it in the middle or you can put it at the back you never know this always catches your opponents off guard because you see people people has been playing super low pets for quite some time and they know about these kind of things like putting scorpions in front and they are starting to shift their strongest unit like here and there in the middle in the back and play around with this to try and counter counter their counter so that's fun so the last one would be no 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 that's not the last one there's two more snakes and flies i i think snakes and flies belong to the same same kind of category like they are i see them as the same like useful but not super useful to the extent where i will always pick it but they are definitely useful in a situation where if you have an empty spot and you have these two units presented to you you have one of these units presented i will always pick that because the fact that if you think about it right you count the stats for flies by itself is 5-5 five five. you can activate three times when three of your pets faint right and what this means is that you are getting 20 20 stats in total because three flies three times five is 15 plus a, for original fly five 20 20 stats so one fly three go 20 20 stats you don't find this kind of deals anywhere man there's no no such creatures here that gives you 20 20 stats only fly so you don't have to play pets you don't have to play this pet right in 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 spawn units at all i mean sometimes we are just so stuck if we, within our ways right like hedgehog and blowfish has to be together it doesn't have to flies has to go with with spawn build it doesn't have to you don't need a turkey you don't need a horse you can always play flies you can play like a you can use it as a very strong fly at the back row and your front units doesn't even have any relation to spawn units at all that will work as well because the level three fly is pretty insane it, it gives you so much stats you know that is like unimaginable and then you have tiger to boost it <laughs> even crazier you don't need turkey at all man i mean turkey is good to have but overall you don't really need it um then you have snakes snakes is a pretty good one-off where if you have extra slot you can put in a snake and in the late game um when a lot of people are running melon armor usually i think now the meta is people run melon armor instead of running garlic armor in the late game so this can help you stack away at those melon armor and this allows your melon armor to with your, your pets with a melon armor to outtrade your opponent very easily right because they don't have melon arm, armor anymore you can just knock them down unless they have garlic armor then it's a kind of like a equal position where you can just when you hit one time and you just out like trade each other equally but most people are playing melon armor so in a in the land of melon armor meta snipers kind of have a have an edge where they can just snipe away at this melon armor and once once it gets hit it's gone right so you can just out trade other pets very easily so that's the whole idea it's a good one off um and then i mean if you're lucky if you get more snakes or flies you can always develop into into them right so it's very versatile that's the most important part and the last and most important one which is where is it jesus sloth come on man most useful pet most beneficial most impactful is sloth man come on it's it gives you moral support and what more do you want from this sloth 
moral support. I mean, if you have this, you're guaranteed to win the game, man. I mean, you do not need all this crazy effect. You just need a sloth to support you. And that's all you need. I mean, did you see Northern Lion's video? I mean, he had, he had a sloth and he won the game. He won, he got 10 wins. So that's the end of this whole video. I hope some of the information I presented was pretty useful to kind of change your mind and change your perspective on these pets and really just look beyond what you normally know of when it comes to building certain pets or certain builds, certain strategies, right? So that's all. If you are interested in my gameplay videos, there are, I have a lot of interesting builds that I've created. You can check it out in the description below and in the comments. So I will see you guys next time.